Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about a nice remote desktop tool you could use over the network or over the internet. It's called Evica, so it has a lot of options and it's very uh, easy to use and it's a good replacement for something like TeamViewer. Let's say you wanted something with a little more features, uh, you could try this out. So they do have a free version and a professional version. Uh, of course, the professional version is going to have a bunch of extra features. So if you go to their website, uh, you can see the plan here. So there's a monthly plan uh, for $5 a month, or if you go for the whole year, it's four seventeen dollars a month. And of course, there's the uh, free version. And when you do the free version, you get 30 days of the Pro included, so you can try out all the extra features. So here's the differences between the two here. So one big benefit of the Pro is if you want to do more than one concurrent connection at the same time, uh, you could do three of them here. And they both have the file transfer feature. The Pro is going to have some better color and display features, you know, Ultra HD, and allow you to do the uh, virtual desktops and that type of thing. Okay, so for this demonstration, we have this Windows 11 computer with Avika installed. And then we also have it running on this Windows 10 computer, just so you can kind of see the difference uh, between the two. So it's make it easier to follow along because I'm going to be switching back and forth between the two here. All right, so let's go over the interface real quick here. So you have your ID for this device and your password. You could create your own custom password, which I did here for this one. Or you could click on refresh to give it a random code. And then you could allow remote devices to connect via your credentials. So if you want to do like a unattended connection, you could do that as well. And then it also shows your recent sessions here. And you can connect to it right from there and initiate one of these actions from here as well, right from the recent sessions. And then you have the list of my devices. So this is all devices logged in with your account will be displayed here. So I just have it installed on this one. And then you could rename and remove it. And then you have your recent sessions here as well, where you have the same type of options. Then you have your settings here. You want to start up on boot, uh, set up the unattended access, security settings for how you want to do the passwords. Uh, if you want to have it uh, refreshed every day or after each connection. Then you have your authentication options here. So if you hover the mouse over each one, it'll kind of tell you what it does here. And then, of course, your security options as well. Then you have your display settings here if you want to hide the wallpaper. Then you have auto mode, which will adjust the picture accordingly uh, to make it fit best on the screen. Then you have your decoder options here. Uh, network settings, proxy server options, HTTPS or SOC S5, and about. Okay, so we're going to connect to the Windows 10 computer from this Windows 11 computer here. So let's go back to Windows 10. All right, so when you're initiating the session here, you would give the ID and password to the other user, and then they would put it in their box here. So I'm going to copy the ID from the Windows 10 computer because that's what we're going to use to connect to it with. Then you have the password. So you could either put in the password or request that user allow you access. So if they're sitting in front of the computer, you don't need the password. They just have to click on allow. All right, so let's go back to Windows 11 and start the session. Okay, so we'll paste in the code here we just copied. Click on Connect. And now you can see, since I've already connected to this computer, I didn't even have to put in the password. It just reconnected me. So let's uh, disconnect here. Go back to the Windows 10. Let's do a new password here. Okay, let's go back to Windows 11 and connect again. Okay, now it either wants the password or we could click on password free connection here. Now we go back to Windows 10. Now you can see it's asking for permission. So we'll just click on accept and we have our options here, which we're what, what kind of options we're going to allow here. All right, so now we can see that Windows 11 Pro is connecting this computer and then the person on the remote session end here could actually disconnect it if they want to on their end or disallow some of these options here. So let's go back over to Windows 11. Okay, so as you can see here, we are on the Windows 10 desktop. I just have it minimized here so you can kind of see both screens in one here, but you could also uh, do full screen if you want to kind of get everything in the screen here. And then of course you have a full screen button here as well. So obviously since I'm recording at a low resolution, things are not quite fitting on the screen the way they should, but you could just click on that and then we have full screen. So we're technically controlling the Windows 10 computer from the Windows 11 computer here. All right, so let's go over some of the options up here. So you have your tabs here. So if you want to have 
uh, other computers open at the same time with their remote control sessions, you could do that. But of course, you'd have to have the pro license if you wanted more than one. So you could just click on the new option here to connect to another one. Uh, we have our quality settings. So of course, these are going to vary too, depending on your plan. You know, like Ultra HD for the Pro, you could do custom settings here. And of course, you have your resolution settings right here as well. Uh, color options. So you're going to have the better color options for the Pro version. Uh, frame rate. Device options, so no digitizer or gamepad were detected on the remote computer. Uh, monitors, so if you have more than one screen, you could do this. And you could also do virtual screens on the Pro version. So if you want to create a new virtual screen. Now we have to accept it on the other computer. We can't do it here, so let me go over there. So now you can see we have another tab here with another desktop. So we could do things like, let's say, make a new folder. And now you can see it's not on the original one, but it's on our virtual desktop here. And you can just close it out when you're done, and you're back to this one. Okay, display options for scaling. Uh, shortcuts if you want to send, like control alt delete or lock the screen, log out, do a restart, shutdown, open file explorer, task manager. You could do a chat. Then obviously, since I'm seeing both screens, it's going to pop up on there, and then they would be able to chat back. Like that. All right, then you have this privacy mode, which will black out their screen. So if you want to work on it without them seeing what you're doing, you could do that. Uh, you have some voice sync for synchronizing your voice between devices. You could do a screen recording of your session. Uh, turn on the mouse lock so they're not able to move their mouse. Then you can initiate the file transfer. So you have the source and destination here. So let's say we go here. So let's say we go down to maybe this temp file here. And then we're going to send it over here to the desktop. Send. And you can see it shows up here on the remote desktop. And then, of course, once again, you have the full screen mode and the disconnect when you're done. And if you want to collapse the options, you could click on this to hide it. Uh, Multi-screen preview mode. If you have more than one uh, connection here, you could kind of have them all on the list here, then just toggle in between them all. And then, of course, the person on the other end here, they have this little pop-out where they could uh, initiate their own chat or turn disconnect like I showed you before. So that'll kind of just stay hidden there while you have the session going. All right, so let's disconnect here. Now we're back to our desktop on Windows 11. So if we go back to Windows 10, okay, now you can see we're disconnected here too. And you can see that new folder that we made in the virtual desktop is still here from before. All right, back to Windows 11 one more time. All right, so let's go back to the website real quick one more time here. All right, so like I mentioned, uh, they have the free plan here, which you could use with all these features. And then the pro plan, uh, with all the extra features and then if you go to the download page you can see the supported operating systems here so windows mac os android ios and the web so you can download whatever version you need and then finally if you want to go to their support page there they have some information some helpful tips so if you need some additional instructions you could come here and check out these features maybe even watch a video on file transfer for example you know, check out the privacy mode screen recording and just kind of read up on whatever you need to figure out all right, so I will put a link in the description to take you to the uh, site where you could download it and then you could try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.